Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How you doing? It's Russ here from Porky's Corner. You know, don't you? You know. That's why you've tuned in. Isn't that right, Dave Caldwell? <laughs> you keep watching. Got a surprise for you coming up in the next few weeks. Right. I'm joined by Rob today. He's from Keithley, Mr. Rob Beck, and he's living in Australia. How are you doing, Rob? I'm all right, Russ. How are you? I'm all right. At what time is it in Australia? I'll be, I'll be your way. Uh, it's 25 to 1 in the morning. 25 to 1 in the morning. Right. All right. Well, I remember when I was a kid, you know, I used to have a little radio like that in the 70s. And I remember listening to it one night, really late at night, and it was from Australia. And it were England against Australia in in the, the one of the test matches, you know, cricket. And I, I remember listening to it and being really excited because so I've got like this radio, little radio given me as a birthday present, I think, or something in the seventies. I was a bit like Adam Smith, you know, Mr. Bean when he got his dictaphone. But I weren't going around <laughs> school pretending to be uh Howard Cosell. I wasn't doing that like Bean. Yeah. But uh but that's my only uh, interaction with Australia other than I think my dad's cousin lives there. So great then uh let's have a little chat about what's been going on lately. What do you think about YouTubers that are not asking the right questions? Well, it's disappointing because for, for us fans, I mean, I live at the other side of the world, so I can't even get to any shows. Um, and you, you just don't get, you just don't get the questions asked. So you don't get the stories. You don't get the, you don't get, you just don't get what you want from the from the, those people who are in those positions where they can ask these tough questions, where they can ask. They all, if you watch an interview on Boxing Social or you watch it on IFL, it's always the same thing. You might as well, you know, they're all the same. And I, and I understand why they do it because if they, if any of them ask the question, which one of the boxers don't like, they'd never get an interview again. Yeah, that's that's it. That's basically it. Uh, so basically, it's not journalism, then, is it? No, it's. Um, I think, and I've heard Eddie mention Coogan's name now a few times in his his own uh, press conferences and stuff. He's, he drops Coogan's name, and it's like it's a promotion. It's not a. It's not an. It's not um, a, a boxing uh, journalist channel anymore. It's it's a platform. Uh, to get the to get those fighters out there, and even more so now that Eddie's lost Sky, so you know, get your fighters on IFL, and we'll get them on YouTube. That's that seems yeah. to be the platform. That's where they're doing it. Yeah, I see where you're coming from. Uh, I'm a bit disappointed that Coogan didn't turn around to Conor Ben in that interview yesterday and and ask him why he don't go to the traditional route. You know, southern area. English, Commonwealth, British, outright, European, and, and then go for a world title. I was a bit disappointed that he didn't ask him that, and, and we build Conor Ben up in the UK as a force in the welterweight division. I thought that was a bit disappointing. Uh, they've got they've, they've decided to go the Chris Algieri route, haven't they? Uh, Chris Algieri, has he got two knockouts on his record? Two retirements, two knockouts out of all them fights. Is that correct? I think so. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to check. He's never been. A, he's never been a big. He's never been a big puncher, has he? And he's never. He's he's stepped up to well to it. So I don't know. Well, Why are we going the Algeria route? Is is and, yeah. and skipping European a good European contender there, which would be a a, a cracking fight. Um, I don't know. We only have... Conor Ben knows. Were you David E. Venetian? Well, the, the thing is, you, you mentioned it there. The fighters should the, they should go through the levels, but they should. If if I was Conor Ben and I, I, I rate myself, why wouldn't you want to be the best in Britain? How does he know? How does he know he's the best in Britain? He and when you've done that, when you've done that, get a European title and it gives you a good ranking. But they want these. WBO Intercontinental title, don't they, or something like that, you know? Well, you've got to understand that his dad 
never went the British route because he didn't want to fight at all Bomber Graham. So his dad swerved people back in the day. And uh, his dad went straight for the WBO, didn't he? Which weren't even recognised in 1988. But Conor Ben's doing something that I've not done, so good luck to him. But he is not for me. Um, I think as soon as he comes up against somebody who's half decent, he could be in a lot of trouble. So let's say a prayer for Conor Ben, because he's a disaster <laughs> waiting to happen. He, he, he looks like a very angry man in all his interviews. He used to be quite, like, he used to have a laugh and a joke, but... You can see the look on his face nowadays when he does interviews. Because he knows that his peers in boxing are all digging him out. Yeah. He knows, he knows it and he's having to batten up the hatches and he's going to have to put up with it. Eddie Hearn can do it. does it for a living. gets paid lots of money. He's not handling it so good because he's getting stick on social media. And the fans are not stupid. He should fight David Ebenezer, but he sh shit his pants. So he's not yeah. fighting him. Yeah. So... All right, then. Uh, there's a lot of talk at the moment. We, Dazon, apparently, is supposed to be going to buy BT Sport. Um, Bricktop's come out and he said he's got a concrete offer and if there's any of that shenanigans, it's going to be going to ICO and that. So he's come out being uh, a little bit territorial. Do you think that them two, Frank and Eddie, should just shake hands and move forward and, and work together for the sake of British boxing? Or do you think that the spiteful bitterness and hatred of each other or each other's families mainly Eddie can't stand him because Frank wrapped his dad up his dad up basically like a pretzel back in the day and got rid of him but uh, do you feel that Eddie wants to get even for his dad but do you feel that it's detrimental to the sport and they should, they should just move on I think it's caused a lot of damage over the last two years two years yeah well last uh, uh, if you think if you think of the short term, it's caused a lot caused a lot of damage recently. The, the fights haven't been made. Big fighters. I, I look at fighters that I like to follow, and Callum Johnson. You know what what's happened to his career? You know the, those fights could have been made cross platform when Eddie had Callum, and they could have made the Callum Yard fight never happened. And now he went. Then he went with Frank, and they still can't make those fights. It doesn't seem to matter what happens. Is we, we miss these big domestic tear-ups, you know. If you think about when Chris Eubank fought Billy Joe Saunders, um, those are the kind of fights you want. As a, as, a, as a Brit, I want to see the best we've got fighting each other. The Dan, You know, the Dubois versus Joyce. Eubank. Eubank uh, Williams, that's a good fight. That new that one that's just been um, just been signed, but between Hearn and uh, Hearn and Frank, it doesn't seem like they're going to be doing business anytime soon. And there's too many platforms. I, I was going to mention what's this this. I mean, I, I see it from another country. It's difficult for me because I'm not in the country. But what's this pro bellum? What channel's that on? I saw I saw Lewis Ritz, Lewis Ritson's signed to fight somebody on Probellum. Where are you going to watch that? I don't know, but what I do know is that they've put, what, five or six fights on in 10 years. So if, if you were going to have a fight a month for 10 years, you'd have 144 fights, wouldn't you? So what if they give us six? So where's the other 138 fights that they owe us? Then we wouldn't have had all them rematches, would we, with Chisora and Dylan White? And, and God knows who else on Matchroom. And, yeah. and Frank's basically been in wilderness. Frank used to used to rip it up. I went to Full Monty show years ago at Sheffield Arena. And there were world titles galore on, and it were packed even on the night. Naz were fighting as well, but not being funny, but Frank's lost it, in my opinion. And, and I think he, he, he needs to be the bigger man and go check Eddie Hearn's hand or go see his dad and they need to work together because all he's doing is pushing boxing apart. Mm. That's how I look at it anyway. I don't know what you... Well, what, what, what cross-platform fight would you want to see? What, what Eddie oh. Hearn fighter versus Frank Warren fighter would you want it's to both. see if you could make a card? All right, then, if you let me answer, I'll tell you. Callum Johnson. 
against Boazzi. There's one. There's a warrior yeah. uh, fighter. Uh, you could do Anthony Yard against Bo uh, Boazzi. If Boazzi got beat in one of them, you could do... You could go on all day, but there's fighters, right, that are with Warren's camp that, are, that, that could fight Eddie Earns, but I think the light heavyweight's the best. And then you've got Joe Joyce, Dylan White. Well, what's up with that? Yeah, that's a good White. fight. Dylan White never calls Joe Joyce that, do he? He, he always no. calls that people that are over 40, doesn't he? Am I right? We yeah, yeah, that's it. Have Derek Chisora against Joe Joyce. Why not? Well, uh, Joyce called Chisora out, I think, in his third after his third fight. He was ready for him then. Yeah, because he's, he's older than Derek, and he's had a, a decorated amateur career that Derek didn't have, but they, they could get at it then. Yeah, Joyce had just run over him, mate. There's loads of yeah. put on loads. Loads, I think so. And they're just well, not, I think, not happening. I think we've got a good... I think in Britain we've got some good light heavyweights, and we've got some good heavyweights as well. And I think Frank... Frank's got the best three. He's got Dubois... Joyce and Fury, hasn't he? If he if he has Fury, if, if Fury doesn't go to Bob Aaron, but what about Jack Catterill, Connor Ben? Well, that's a good fight, but Jack's just waiting. He's waiting for uh, Taylor to get fit, isn't he? That, that that's the big fight that's signed, and I think they're a level above. Who's a level above Connor Ben? I think Catterall and uh, definitely, I think he's a level of Yeah, but Conor Ben's the one with all hype behind him and the one with the big mouth and the promoter with the big <laughs> mouth. So why don't they just put set Jack Catterall on and sort him out? Yeah, well, he's, he's going to go for all, he's, gonna go, he's going for all the belts, isn't he, Jack? So you can't blame him. He's going for undisputed. What do you think to uh, uh, Natasha Jonas not getting the rematch with Terry Harper when she'll promise to? Yeah, I, you see, some of those, some of that stuff is hard to follow. Obviously, Joe Gallagher, for whatever reason, and Eddie Hearn, that's a personality thing, isn't it? That's a personality clash. And whoever Joe Gallagher has in his gym, um, and unfortunately, it just seems like now that there's two left, isn't there? There's Natasha Jonas and Callum Johnson, and neither of them two are going to do any business with uh, Eddie Hearn if they're with Joe. I see Terry Harper came out and said that her and Natasha Jonas have got unfinished business. Why would she say that when she's had two years to rematch her? Well, she, she probably she probably would fight her, but it's she doesn't decide, does she? It's down to promoter. Good fight, actually. We'll fight a year, but women won it. So why they couldn't do a rematch? Because I mean, women's boxing, there's not that many, there's not that many. Lasses that are that are at that level, you know, like they're either in one-sided knockovers or they're in, you know, those those Natasha Jonas type Terry Harper fights. The rest of them are not worth watching. Hmm. You asked me something in your email and um, or on a text. You said something about you if you and I said, why don't you come on the channel and ask me? Yeah. So well done for coming on the channel because there's a lot of trolls out there who send me stuff, trying to have a little dig. And I, I don't give time of day, but every now and then I might say, well, come on channel then and ask me that on Zoom and I'll give you a big moment. So well done for coming on. But to all them who never reply, <clears throat> Apple crumble. Go on, what did you no, want to say about Yui? To be honest, Russ, I'm surprised because, well, I, I'm, a, a, I'm not trolling. I'll just let that out there. I'm not trolling. Oh, I'm yeah, a fan yeah, of it. Sure. On, yeah. um, but, uh, and I love the, um, I actually like the content where you get after, you get after people, especially, you know, you go after the cam man, the tomato cam man. Why? Oh, why? He's telling us he's a road man killer, isn't he? Dylan White. And he's got eight That's people it. over 40 on his CV. <sighs> well, th that's, you see, and, and I, and I like that. It's funny, but, but it, and it's true as well. But in the same breath, um, Huey, Huey's record, the, the majority of, I don't, has he beaten anyone under the age of 30? Huey beat Redenko, didn't he, when he was a kid? 
when they were 19, 20 year old, they were 24 and one. After that, the McKenzie couldn't match him after that. But well, yeah, but that was go on. That was a long I mean, that was a long time ago. Rodenko was what he came. I think when he fought Rodenko, Lu, 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 Lucas Brown had knocked Rodenko out in the fight before. Yeah, well, that was a good win for you. He was a teenager or 20 year old. After that yeah. performance, you couldn't get matched. They found it hard to match him. But a lot of people don't didn't want to fight Yui because they thought his style was similar to Tyson's. But I think Tyson's yeah. maybe a little bit more advanced than him because he's older, isn't he? Yeah. If you look at where they both were at 27 year old, uh, Tyson was beating Klitschko, wasn't he? Tyson beat Klitschko at 27. Tyson beating Klitschko when he were 27 in a few months. Yui's just turned 27. So let's judge Yui in another 12 months. Do you know what I mean? Because he's already he's obviously been in with top operators, hasn't he? Yeah, and I think because he has Fury in him, you immediately think Tyson, and they're not. You can't judge them the same. My my, pro, my problem with the my problem with the um, Huey Fury is there's so many fights out there, but he never calls anybody out. Yeah, but that don't mean to say that he won't take the fights, does it? Let it'll be it'll be interesting to see who he fights in December. Well, we're because... going to see that people need to stop having a go at him like they were Savannah. Savannah don't call people out. Listen, I've been sat with Savannah and Yui on an airplane, right, and I've never got Ooh. words out of them in five hours. <laughs> and they're, they're just yeah. that, they're that, they're that type of people. You can go out into a restaurant with them and, not, and have the meal with and after they're not sent out, they'll be on the phones. They're just quiet individuals. It doesn't mean to say that they're not dedicated to the craft. God, do you want to see ourselves? No, I, 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 yeah, no. I, I, don't, I don't dispute that. I think I think with Peter and I think the training, you can obviously see. I just think in boxing, you've either got to have the talent or you've got to have something to sell. And his fights, he's a bit like Joe Parker, isn't he? Do you really want to watch him? I mean, did we see anything different in the Hammer fight than I've seen? Well, I'm a bottle, isn't he? I'm a bottle that as soon as you upped it, he looked like he wanted out, didn't he? But why why are we fight why is he fighting hammer? I don't know. I don't do matchmaking. You probably have to take that out with a uh, boxer who, who are doing it for uh I know. For Sky now, you'd have to take that out with them. Personally, just like this. I, I wrote this little list. I wrote this little list before I came on. So for me, we've got Yorker, Dubois, Wallin, Joyce, uh Sanchez, Gassiev, Hergovic, Bacoli, and Hunter. They're all like lower, just they're all prospects. Anyone who fights them, they're going to want to win the fight. And for me, when you pick a, an opponent like Christian Hammer or a Dominic Brazil, they're not coming to win. And that's what frustrates me about these boxing cards now is you get a fighter, Huey Fury, and he's fighting somebody who's doesn't want to win. Mm. I want to see, I don't care who they are, I just want to see fights being made. There's there's so many names in the heavyweight division, but no one is calling anyone out anywhere near them. That's the frustrating thing. Who's calling Yui out, though, out of all then? Uh, no one. There you go. So what is he supposed to do? Nobody's calling him out. He's not the type to call anybody out. So you leave it to people in the background, don't you? You, his team, like his dad and Sky and Mick Hennessy and people like that, people who know what they're doing. But if they feel that they have to put him in with Christian Hammer and he's 27 year old and it's a, it's a tick over fight or whatever to ease him back in, I don't think there's not wrong with that. I was a bit disappointed with the opponent myself, but Hammer's got a good pedigree, but he's past his best. And you, he got the W, didn't he? But he moves on now, but I do want to see him in better fights than that but so it, it's, how it's it, frustrating isn't it it's it's so frustrating so above them i've got ruiz parker wilder joshua and white they're like there's well four of them are champions and one of them's one of them's going to be number one contender for fury's belt 
No, no, no. Out of the, out of, Dylan White's never the, been, no, Dylan White's never been mandatory for WBC in four years. No, and, but he's I don't think he's going to get it this time either. I'll just keep it's a load of shit. When have you seen? When have you seen? Hang on a minute. When have you seen Dylan White mandatory? When have you ever seen it in black and white on their website in four years? Have you ever seen that? Because I because I put it up on my channel last year. <laughs> never been no, mandatory. But... Never. Didn't he, didn't he win the interim belt? Silver belt interim. I don't give a fuck. He's never been mandatory. Right, I proved it. He said, oh, going back three years, I were mandatory. No, you won't. Dylan White, you've never been man mandatory in your life, mate, for WBC. You are the can't man. Anybody who wants it can't get it. So let's just Unless... fucking stop with the shit about Dylan White. <laughs> Badly done to poor little Dylan White over three years waiting for his turn. He's had ample opportunity to fight in big fights for world titles. He never took the... Never took the bull by the horns, did he? He's a British champion, like Yui Fury. That's all he's won, a British title. That's it. Yeah. And Dylan White's six years older than Yui. How do you think Yui would go with Dylan White, then? I think he beats him on points over 12 rounds comfortably. He doesn't get near him, and he destroys Chisora. Eighth, ninth, tenth round knockout, if he falls. Yeah, I've written Chisora, Takam, and Hellenius. He obviously can't fight Chisora because Chisora's tied up with Parker. Yeah. Maybe Tak, maybe they'll grab Takam or Hellenius for the December. I mean, Hellenius is coming off a good win, actually. Yeah, but uh, Robert Hellenius, right? Dave Allen went over to Finland and bashed him up. So what does that say about Robert Hellenius? Do you know what I mean? Well, did you see the Kawanaki fight? But, you know, pair with them. You would put them in his top pocket. They're not, yeah. even, they're not even the racers. Oh, what other one you were on about? Takam. Takam. Well, ta oh, fucking hell. I'm trying to think of an opponent that they're going to choose. I'm not saying... I mean, ta they, these are gatekeepers, aren't they? Yeah, and maybe you needs another two, two gatekeepers. Then he's got to be in a fight. Otherwise, I think... Because I think if he gets caught out, before he's in a fight, if he fights two gatekeepers or two Neely men again, and they're not brilliant performances, I fear for him. But I also know that he's a very talented lad, Yui, and his dad's a very good trainer, world class trainer. So yeah. they'll ride it out, won't they? Peter won't be bothered about what people say. Oh, Yui, they're thick skinned. But people shouldn't dig him out all the time because. Like I said, he trains hard, Yui, and he turns up for his battles. And let's have it right, he was robbed against Parker. Yeah, mind. I mean, it, the old Shades of Ali quote from Mick Hennessy. Do you remember that one? Shades of Ali. Well, I don't know about Shades of Ali. I don't know about Shades of Ali, but there were shades of not getting hit in there by Parker because Yui never had a bad oh, yeah. yeah, he... Um, that's one of the only fights where he, you know, because he, he cuts up, doesn't he? He gets caught, yeah. but he just jabbed his head off and ran. And, and, and it was, look, it's what you like, in it? Because that was an extreme version of Huey Fury, wasn't it? Back foot, running around the ring, jabbing. Well, he, he's learning all the time, isn't he? But like I said, he's just turned 27. They're all going on about Fraser Clark and if he's going to sign with whoever, Eddie Earn or Sky or whatever. But Fraser Clark's 30. And he hasn't even had a pro fight yet. You is 27. You is over nine years younger than Joe Joyce. Yeah. Oh, there's plenty of time. Plenty of time. Well, there's plenty of time. I mean, I think he's he's going to be waiting for people to retire. If you if you ask, if it will, he's not going to win. He's not going to win a world title if you've got the likes of Wilder, Joyce, and Fury and Usyk. And Joshua, he's not going to beat any of them. He's going to have to wait for those guys to go out, move on. Well, they're all and then, then does he beat the likes of Tony Yoka, Daniel Dubois? Tony Yoka might even be banned for life soon. Well, because <laughs> he, he, yeah. you know, he's not an angel, is he? No, Daniel but he can Dubois. fight. Daniel Dubois, I think you would beat him. I think Daniel Dubois, I think you would beat him. He didn't like it getting clipped. Daniel Dubois, he's had it all his own way all his career. As soon as he got it put on him a couple of times, he didn't like it, did he? 
But I, I think we, I think everybody underrates Joe Joyce, though. Yeah, I, I think, think they underrate his power. I think he's of the Alexander Usyk ilk. He's not as good as Usyk, but he he went the distance with him, didn't he? Yeah. So you know, you, you can't you can't anybody who fights Joyce is going to be in for a horrible night. Yeah. And Fury himself has said he's the he's the man to watch. So. He'd oh, we'll be. see. But we wish you you well. And like I said, he's 27, so get off his get off his case, all you trolls. But after you've got off his case, look in mirror at yourself and ask you ask you what you're doing with your lives. And like I said, digging you we are. Digging our souls. Right. Uh Kel Brook, Amir Khan. The win round with begging bowls, trying to sell this fight. Do you want to see it, Rob? It's signed, isn't it? Apparently, is it not signed? Well, what platform's it on? Oh fuck knows. I saw. I, I thought it was signed on a uh, a catchway. I, I, I saw something yeah, today on Instagram. They're not even going to try and make way. They can't. Well, they can't, can they? they? They. I don't even think they've got the enthusiasm for this fight. No, they just want to pick free money up like David A and people like that, and kick bo- kick sand in the face of boxing, and then get out of sport and laugh at all fans. Kel Brook keeps coming back for these comeback fights and getting paid millions of pounds and getting smashed up. I mean, brass neck on them is unbelievable. Kel Brook, brass neck on you is unbelievable. Leave the sport now. Stop hanging around like a bad smell. Get out of the sport now. Count your millions. Go hug your missus. Hug your children and watch Coronation Street with your Chinese Kel. That's what you need to do, mate. Same with Amir Khan. Go enjoy your lives. Who who was Khan's last fight? I can't even remember it. Well, they're not even relevant, mate. And I'm a big, massive fan of both. Mass, I were a massive Kel. I were a Kel Brook group a years ago. Fucking hell, I lost plot. Yeah, okay. yeah, big big fan of Kel Brook. I lost plot. I were like, oh, Kel Brook smashes him up. Oh, he does him. I were I'm a Khan fan years ago. But I don't well, like to see them take piss out fans, and they're taking the piss out boxing fans. And all these YouTubers with access are not saying, well, don't you think you're just taking liberties? Yeah. You no, know, with fans, you keep coming back and for pay-per-view fights and one more fight, and I've still got something left in the tank. I don't want to hear any of that shit. Get out of the sport now, because all them, all them who are hanging around, Kel Brook, all them who are around him, all these big entourage of experts, people who are telling when to sleep, when to eat, when to shit, when to fart, Went to have a drink, all that lot. And then all them around Amir Khan, always blowing in their ear holes, and I will go get this, it's free money, this and that. Why don't they just sit down and say, have we had enough out of sport now? They've had the reds punched in. They've been knocked out numerous times. They've had the faces punched in. Brooks quitting fights, Annie, we know that, don't we? Other one. Well, Kel Brooks got two titanium eye sockets, hasn't he now? Thanks to, uh, Other one, it's not about him, him having quitting him. I think he's got bigger balls than Kel Brook. But they've made millions. They might have lost millions in investment. They might have paid millions out in taxes or whatever. Good luck to them. Point is, stop taking the piss out boxing fans. I won't be buying it, and I urge people not to buy it. Fuck them off. But the people that are around them... Well, when he got smashed up in his last fight, they were all protective of Kel and I just want what's best for Kel. One of them would say, oh, Kel, Kel's a great guy. I just want what's best for him. It's not about money. It's about health and he's got a family. Now, look, they're wanting them fucking firing line again, aren't they? Well, yeah. I've seen the training clips that I have seen of Kel is, um, is with Dom. So. Well, they're not going to put any training clips on him looking shite, are they? Do you know what I mean? They're going to put the training clips on him and Dominic. Yeah, well, that's yeah. the him. I do, I do live up here, don't I? So, yeah, I do know that. But the point I want to make is, I thought he left him to go to John Fuchs, didn't he, at one point? It, whoever took that. him for that Crawford fight? Who took him for the Crawford fight? I don't know, mate, but at the end of the day, he didn't have to pay anybody 10%, did he? <coughs> all about money, wasn't it? All about money, Crawford fight. Let's try and hold on to as much money. It's boxing's about money. The chat shit about legacies, like Tommy Fury chatting shit of the week about going to win a world title and a British and all that. It's about pound notes. 
That's it. These people don't care about belts. They care about money. If they didn't, if they didn't, if they weren't doing boxing, they'd probably be selling drugs or robbing banks or burgling houses. They're not going to be having a job in an office, are they? No. You know what I mean? So let, I can... let's talk proper. Let's talk proper fucking proper boxing talk. Let's not talk shit. Kel Brook and Amir Khan are stood on penthouse balcony with the little dicks out, pissing on fans, and all fans are like, "Ah, Amir, covered in piss." Right, and they're up there laughing in penthouse. All the dicks who keep paying for the pay per views and the ringside seats and all this because it's an event. Well, let me tell you this this kid won't be paying, I won't be going to the fight, and I won't be paying pay per view. And that, as that's just something I feel strongly about, I think it's overkill. It's like Mayweather, Pacquiao, it went too long, and Fury Joshua one's gone on too long now, same as. <coughs> Joshua Wilder one on well, Wilder one. It, they went on for too long, and and at any yeah. day fan, fan, fans got pissed. Fans got pissed off. Fans got pissed but, off. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but Porky, I can see this happening. I can see um, Khan Khan or Kell Brook turning back the clock. One of them turning back the clock just enough, just enough to secure a Conor Ben fight. Just enough what? Just Eddie Hearn will get involved. Whoever wins this fight between Khan and Kelbrook will have turned back the clock just enough to get the Conor Ben fight. Fuck, you don't want to see that. Conor Ben already one of them two. Oh. Oh. They've both been called out by Conor Ben. He's, he's, he's offered to fight both of them. So I can see that happening. Summer next year. For, for what belt? Maybe. For what belt? No belts. Just to... Just, just to, just so Conor Ben can fight another world class elite fighter. Well, after after Algeria who could not skin off a rice pudding, Eddie. You got to, you got to. If 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 Kel Brook was to fight Algeria, who'd win? Kel Brook. Khan would probably beat Algeria again. Yeah. That's how that's how bad Algeria is right now. So. It's a step up, isn't it? If Conor Ben was to fight Kel Brook or Amir Khan, even though they're both shot, it's a step up. What about Conor Ben against Chris Conger? He won't fight him, will he? Because he's Michael too McKinson. dangerous. What about him? Chris Jenkins. Josh Kelly. What about all them? Josh Kelly, got set, the... Josh Kelly got set about even Eastern for the first few rounds, didn't he? Could Conor Ben live with him if he put that heat on him? I don't think he's been in a fight fight, Conor Ben, yet. The, the, yeah, I'd love to see that fight. There seems to be a problem with Josh Kelly's fitness after five rounds. He doesn't seem to have any... He just seems to disappear. But that would be a good fight. But that's what's annoying about British boxing is we don't get these fights, do we? All the, all the Brits, all them, all them lads, all these... Paydays that Eddie Hearn's giving to likes of Chris Algieri, he could be keeping that money with the Brits. Yeah, he could. Yeah, that's what, that's what pisses me off. You'd rather that's what annoys me about boxer with with some of these matchmaking. The the, the bringing the bringing fighters over are useless. Give that money to an English lad, British lad. Make it an, get a bit of a bit of make it entertaining, you know. Mm. Yeah, okay, who, cares about, who cares about Chris Algieri? That's what. Who, who cares about Chris Algieri? Nobody cares about no. him, mate. He's in wilderness. Can I just uh, mention this? So get me in good books with Cameron. As you've probably seen, if you look below, Cameron's doing merchandise, porky merchandise. So don't fucking buy any. <laughs> I'm not getting fuck all out of it. <laughs> right, second thing I want to mention. Uh, there you go. What is that? Who's that? That's, that looks like a looks like a contract, doesn't it? It's a boxing contract from Spencer Fearon's uh, management legal team. This is going to be on uh, members' area sometime this week. I'm going to dissect it with somebody who who knows about these things. I don't know a little bit about contracts. I didn't sit on my ass for five years with Dennis. So I've gone through it all. I finally managed to finally go through it all. <laughs> okay, this is gonna this is gonna be a really popular video. This one when I've got this down because 
what planet is Spencer Fearon? What planet are you on? But we're going to put this over here. I'm probably going to film that at some point in this month on members area as a little treat for everybody. But Spencer, what planet are you on? That's all I want to know, mate. All right. But get, keep yourself in good shape, Spencer, because we will do a battle next year. Right. I want to I ask wanna, you. Go on. I was going to say, I want to know has he done a special, does he want someone to be a special guest referee like they do in the WWE? No, nah, Mickey Fee, I was going to referee it. We're going to do a battle in it. We're going to do a battle in Mick's gym. Mick's going to ref it or some other guy down there, Noel, uh, who's, a bit, who's a nice guy. And that's it. Spencer's going to turn up on his own, like he said he would, and we'll do a battle. But you don't have to tie your arm behind you, Ed Spencer. I want it all to be fair. All right. But we will do a battle, but not yet. As you can see, Spencer, I'm not in good nick, am I, at the moment? I'm not in good nick at all. Uh, let's have a little look. We've covered Connor Ben. Uh, Eubank Williams, do you think that's a good fight? I do. I do. Because I think I, they're both what? Yeah, and another thing as well about that fight, if Chris Eubank wins, and he's a, he'll be a favourite, won't he? Because he'll have all backing with judges and every blah blah blah. <laughs> if Chris Eubank wins that fight, that's his best win as a, as a pro boxer. So that's how hard a fight it is for Eubank. So don't be surprised. If Eubank pulls out that fight, don't be surprised if we get any messing about. Well, this is what I was saying earlier. This is a fight between two people who both want to win and both can win. Which he, these are the it's like Arthur versus um, yeah. These are the fights that you want to see. It's got classic written all over it, Rob, hasn't it? It has. It'll be this will be a this will be one of uh, when Eubank's retired. This will be one of his signature fights. Liam Williams. For, I, I want Liam Williams to win because I don't like gimmicks. Uh, I'm not a Eubank fan. He, he doesn't know it for me. He's, he's a tosser like his dad. Right? They think they're entitled to a living. He, he, he's swerved his way around every hard fight for years, just like his old man did. It's like he, his old man had 19 WBO world title wins. Uh, Nigel Ben were one of them. And, and who, who were other three others? Well, well, they were all former current or current world champions. But let me tell you this. So that's four. We're all other fucking 15. And that's like Eubanks Jr., his record all got same as Fathers. Get the money in, fight stiff, big it up, big them up as hard fights. And that's the problem with boxing at the moment. These people think they can just come back to the well and take. Oh, I fancy a new McLaren. I'll come back and take some more pay-per-view money in boxing. I think I think uh, Eubank's a bit of a Eubank Junior is a bit of a mixed bag though because to be fair to him he he went in that World Boxing Super Series and he did fight George Groves and Groves Groves still had some at left. Um, DeGail was past it, but he fought Billy Joe when they were both young lads, you know. So Nick Blackwell, he's fought people at the you know the the level that he was at. He's gone through the gear, you know, he's gone through the levels, hasn't he? That's what I'll say about Nick you. Nick Blackwell. Jr. Nick Blackwell. No, at the, t at the, t at the time, at the you know, a domestic level fight, they both came forward. It was a great fight. Um, you know, and he, uh, Blackwell fought uh, Saunders there. These were all like lads that were going through at the same time at the British level. So that's all I'll say about Eubank is he, he did fight those guys. He didn't get the win. He obviously didn't get the result against Saunders. But what I don't like is where his career's gone. It's gone nowhere. When you look at He's Conor Ben's career, Bob, do you feel that Rock Conor Ben should have gone like Saunders and Blackwell and you, yeah. you know, fighting domestic guys? Instead of trying them, to go they'd, they'd have been the fights that you talk about. Yeah. You know. Instead of trying to go fuck money. Yeah. You know, the those are the fights where, and, and, and this is, um, it builds a bit of, you know, everyone likes it, the press conferences where they're getting at each other, you know. If you remember the Chris Eubank and, was it Spike? Spike O'Sullivan. Spike O'Sullivan gave Chris Eubank a kiss at the press conference and it was, it went off. And the, the, Yeah, the good domestic fights. The, these are what we're getting robbed of nowadays. We don't see them. They just don't happen anymore. This is why this is a good fight, Williams and Eubank. That's... Anybody in England, that's what they want to see. And I want Williams to win, purely because, he, similar to you, it's, um, he deserves a break, you know? Like, this would be a good win. This would be a good win for him and get him back. You know, he did 
He did well against Andrade, who's tricky. So if he turns up like he did in Andrade fight, he'll beat you, man. Mm. He'll beat you, and he's technically better, so it's going to be interesting. All right, then. Uh, we'll finish off on who's your top five pound for pound in the world at the moment? I think you can't look beyond Canelo for number one. He's been beat, though, hasn't he? Yeah, he's been beat, but he was young and he was fighting somebody who's never been beat. Then the I case could be him. made, though, that he has lost a couple of others, though, couldn't it, as well? Uh, yeah. Canelo on points comes to mind. But um, I just think... I just think uh, if Canelo steps up and fights Paterbia and beats him, he's one of the best fighters we've ever seen. So he'd be our number one if he beat b to beef. Yeah, and, and Usyk is number two, I think. Well, he's my number one, Usyk, because he's, he's never failed a dope test like Canelo. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah. he weren't holding people to ransom at catch weights for years at £155. What's all that about? Yeah. I don't like that. He've had everything stacked in his favour, everything from judges to referees to gloves to arenas, the lot, to money, to camps, to everything. And I won't trick think, but Usyk, he just does, does his camp, turns up, fights and goes on. Undisputed cruiserweight, unified heavyweight, undefeated, all done in, what, 18, 19 fights, is it? And then yeah. you've got the Olympic gold medalist at heavyweight. So as far as I'm concerned, Usyk's the number one. Yeah. And, and, and any, any rest of them, you could just, yeah. Crawford, Spence, uh, Inoue, maybe Tyson Fury in there. Do you know what I mean? But he's only had one. Yeah, day, I, he? I like I like Errol Spence. I don't I don't I think he's the king at that weight. I'd throw Fury in there, maybe number four. And then um, I don't know. I like jo I think Josh Taylor's a good fighter. I think um, yeah, Josh Taylor. I think he maybe needs uh, maybe creep in there. But win. He's, he's had a, he's, he's, he hasn't really got a mega win on his record, has he, Josh Taylor, has he? He could get a mega win at welterweight. He could beat Spence or Crawford. That would be a signature win for him, wouldn't it? But he's he in Spence my top, top 10. He's in my top 10. Yeah. We're not top yeah. five. A fantastic yeah. fighter. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Who, who's, your, who's your other four then after Canelo? I'd, I'd, I'd go Canelo. Usyk, maybe Spence, Fury, and because he's you know, because he's from the UK, I probably go Josh Taylor. But so at yeah. your top five, two of them have failed dope tests. Then yeah, Fury. Well, yeah, Fury. But can we get away? Ball. Can we get away didn't, from didn't, dope testing in the sport? Didn't Peter Fury say it was wild ball meat? I don't know. I've, I've seen that many statements put out. I don't know what to believe. Wild boar? Was that, did that come from Peter's exact words or was it from some press cuttings? I, I can't remember where that was from, but wasn't it both Huey and Huey and Tyson? Bill? Well, I don't remember Huey ever getting a two-year ban. And if, and Huey fought, Huey's never gone of a two-year without a fight. He's always fought uh, in between, so I don't know about Yui having a ban, although I have read that he did get a two-year back, back dated ban, but Yui's never yeah, been out of boxing two years, has he? So the, the, no. there's, there's a mystery to it all, isn't there? It, that, the whole, that whole saga of the Tyson, the Huey and Tyson wild ball meet, um, what happened? Then they got a backdated ban. What happened? Who knows? You never well, get to the bottom on it, do you? It's boxing, isn't it? It's uh, the wild, wild west, isn't it? <laughs> look at the look at the top ten heavyweights. So those there's, there's guys in there. They've all, all they've all gone. Well, they'll all test positive, probably. If well, Dylan White, right. Tyson Fury, Dylan White. That's two. All test free. There's um, Pulev's up there. Still. Did Pulev test? Yeah, all Miller four. I don't know about Pulev. Uh. But there's, you can go on forever, can't you? Eric Molina's just fought. He's, he's, he's a dope fiend, isn't he? He just fought on Dazone, hasn't he, the other day, or 
box that Eddie Earn show us from it. Oh, Hammer. Well, Hammer. Has Hammer failed? Wasn't Hammer. Didn't Hammer fail? I don't know. I don't know. It's not good. Yeah. All them people then, they're all mates with Tony Bellio, but he wants to stone them if they're, if they're anybody else's fighters, doesn't he? Tony, Bell Tony. Tony Bellio's cracks me up. Hey. The disappearing man, Tony Bellio. I know. He just, he, wants to get home to hey? he just wants to get home to his family. Yeah, yeah. His wife and kids. Great. Right. Listen, it's been a pleasure to have you on, Rob. I take it this is the first time you've done all like this, isn't it? Mate, I was surprised, to be honest. When you commented, I was like, oh, wow. Give it a go. I didn't actually know you'd be filming it, to be fair. I just thought you wanted to chat, like you were thinking I was going to no, be a troll. Just, we had a chat first, and then I said, well, I'm going to film it now. So you, you've been filmed yeah. now, about an hour. So are you happy yeah. with your performance? Oh, mate, I don't know. I don't know. You don't I know. don't know, mate. I don't know. Well, you've tried I'm not a troll. I'm, all, all I'll tell you is I'm not a troll. Never said you were just, a troll. Um, I'll give I you just, opportunity. Um, you always talk on me, don't you, when I speak? I give you opportunity to come on and ask me that question about you. Because I get asked that a lot. Because what people want me to do, they want me to come on there and comment and say, yeah, you was a load of shit. And then they want to screenshot it and send it to people, don't they? And, that's, and so when I get asked that all the time in emails constantly, I get asked constant stuff because what people do, to try and cause problems behind the scenes in boxing. That's what they do. People, rather than just come and bang on your door, nobody bangs on your door. They go around the situation. It's like if you want to stop a promoter putting shows on, you don't just tell him to his face you're going to sign his fighters. You go behind his back and try and sign him. Well, this is what they do in this what I do, to try and cause problems. People try and cause problems behind the scenes. So when I get people constantly like you, who've asked me more than once, sent you that question, You've asked me a couple of times. So when you're asking me a couple of times on different days, I'm thinking, why is he asking me that again? I'm not going to answer the question if I don't want to answer it. So I said, well, why don't you come on the channel and ask me it? You've come on, so I give you respect. But you're only one of two in this year that has. The other 60 or 70 that ask shit, pure shit, they never want to come on. They want to, yeah. they want to go on the keyboard, they want to go on it, and this, this is what they do. They'll go, I tell you what, I'm going to invent a name. I'm not going to say anybody's name. There's a lot of them are arseholes. They'll invent a name and call the sentence this name like, I don't know, Peter Pumpkin or John the, John the Roadman Killer or something, and they'll send I'm going to ask Porky if he's ever boxed in his life, even though they watch every video, right? every single video, and you never see, never seen me once say I've been a professional boxer. But they want to ask me, have you ever boxed Porky? So I say, why don't you come out the channel and ask me that? And then they don't send out again. Because I'm giving them the opportunity to be a man and be like you. Let's have a look at your face and let's see what you've got to say. Instead of behind a, behind a keyboard like that. Because trolls are people behind keyboards. That's what they are, trolls. People can say, oh, he's the troll. How am I a fucking troll? I'm in front of that camera. Everybody knows my name around where I live. Everybody in boxing knows who I am and where I, where that go, where my office is. But you get yeah. all the troll if you say something that people don't. If I say, look, Kel Brook shot to bits. He shouldn't be on pay-per-view. Why would he be even be begging for a pay-per-view fight? Who want to give him a pay-per-view fight? On strength of fucking what? What has he done? Yeah, he's done stuff in the past, but what has he done recently? He's done fuck all. They're not even going to fight for a belt. They don't even want to pay sanction fees. So why should I get behind that? But if that's trolling, so fucking be it. But I'm not doing it behind this to Kel Brook, am I? I'm not doing no. it behind the keyboard, am I? I'm saying it. If Kel Brook wants to have a conversation with me, he's welcome on here any time or any of them clowns from his gym. They're welcome on here any time. Any of that lot up there. And I'll ask them about fighters failing dope tests. And what's, what's Dominic Ingle going to do about that? Because they won't want to take me on, will they? Because when you speak from the heart and you speak the truth, you don't want to go on the social media and pipe the sends up as this and that when the fighters are failing dope tests. What? So if Dominic Ingle has a fourth guy failing a dope test in his gym or he's training, that board going to do old? Because what if we have a fifth? 
And what if in 10 years we have a six and that kid dies or gets hurt, which would have done? What then? Are they going to say, well, Porky were digging him out in 2018 and nobody were doing fuck all then? Well, we're 2022 in another couple of months. What yeah. then? What does the future hold for them? If there is another dope test, will we even get to fucking hear about it? Has there been more dope tests? Who's asking these questions? Is Coogan Cassius going to ask Dominic and all that? They keep going on about Jarrell Miller and all these other people who are failing dope tests and going after them. Look a little bit closer to home. It's like the Billy Joe situation, isn't it? These fuckers never, never asked him no, did they? Nobody, nobody said no, did they? They did that one interview, didn't they? And we've not seen him. Well, four months later, when it's yeah. all that, when it's all that, and they've all had to go, all got deads together. I'm on about on the fucking night. The young Mark Tibbs out to dry, didn't they? Why not something done the next day? Why weren't we seeing footage of him going down to oper for his operation or x-rays and all that shit? Because that's all we're reading about when Daniel DeBar had his injury. Eddie Earn going on about, well, I haven't seen no x-rays. Where's fucking Billy Joe's x-rays? Why ain't people putting it on him? Because they're frightened, aren't they? They're losing access. That's all it is. Frightened. Access. That's all. So is that journalism? What? Is that journalism? No. It's shit house yeah. behaviour. Shit house behaviour. Yeah. And we love the sport so much. Gareth A. Davis telling people, well, why don't he go ask him? Because he don't want to lose access, does he? So they're not proper journalists, are they? They're not proper. It's a way for the, it's just an ex, a platform extension. That's all it is. Mm. Every single one of them platforms is just is just another way to promote the fighters. It's not about journalism, is it? No, it ain't, mate. But like I said, I, I, I'm past caring now. I'm just going to do what I want. I'll say what I want. I always have anyway. If anybody's got a problem, come see me. Do something about it. Come and beat a cripple up. Put me out of my misery. <laughs> Body shots. Hey, I, got, I had one question. I had one question for you, Ross. One question. Well, um, Who, who's your who's your top your top five British heavyweight? Top British at the moment. At the moment. At the moment, yeah, in Britain. Top five. Tyson would have to be number one. British. Then you'd have to go. Fucking hell. Well, Dylan White. How, how could you put him? What's he done lately? Fucking beat somebody fussy off who knocked him out before. So I won't, I won't give him number two. You'd have to go Joel Joyce, number two. Joshua, number three, on the CV. Uh, Dylan White and Newey, four and five. Or five, or whichever way you want to go. You'd have to sell them five, wouldn't you? What's Newey ranked? He's about eighth on box set for Britain, is he something, or seventh or something? I don't know. You'd have to say them five, wouldn't you? That's what. That's my five. But it's subjective, isn't it? Box, box, yeah. Boxing's a, boxing's a subjective sport. You know, yeah. everybody's different, aren't they? Do I'm just looking at the future. I'm just looking at the future because obviously, in a couple of years, you're probably going to be saying goodbye to Joshua and Fury. They're probably going to be gone. So now nah, Tyson will be fighting while he's forty. Tyson, he just won't fight as much. He'll come back and pinch free money all the time because that's what they love, isn't it? Money, but. I think personally, Tyson's not a two fight a year man now. His body can't do camps. Yeah. Couldn't get through that last camp by the looks in it. Bit of train, but the body can't do it now because they're at that age. So they, he has to adapt his style. And Tyson Fury, what people are threatening to threatening to fucking ask him is this: Tyson, is it true your legs have gone and you now you're now a brawler? Because that's what happened to Ali when he came back, didn't it? He had to be a bit of a brawler, didn't he? And got at ropes and tech punishment. He's as Tyson's legs gone. Not one fucking person from YouTube or boxing media, Gareth A. Davis, Ron Lewis, any of them shit houses. Not none of them has said, Tyson, do you think your legs have gone? Maybe they might be playing it safe, and they might be thinking, well, let's see what happens in his next fight. And if he don't, he ain't got no spring in his legs. Then, is he, he? He might be on slide then, and then. He might get beat by Joshua. He might do because we are we are Tyson having that them reflexes and that movement. He, he's going to be vulnerable because of his chin, isn't he? Because he, he goes down, doesn't he? He does go down. You can't keep getting up, can you? 
Yeah, he's reverted back. When he first get, came on scene and I first watching Tyson, he was exciting. He, he yeah, used well, to get involved. Were fighting in stiff. He was fighting stiff, though, wasn't he, when he first came on scene? Yeah, That's right. he, Cunningham, Cunningham dropped him, didn't he? And it, it, it reminded me of that fight where he was walking for. I just wanted to walk through him. That one, uh, when he first first on scene, though, was it that, was it? No, but it, it, when his early Tyson Fury was that, and then he evolved into the, you know, the boxer, the Peter Fury... Oh, let me just stop of... you there. Let me just stop you there. Right? I'm going to tell you something now. And I don't think I've ever told anybody this before. Right. And this is true. This is true on my children's life. Right. When Pete, Peter Fury only trained Tyson for eight fights, his late brother, Yui, who was a lovely man, he trained him before then. And Robert McCracken trained him for one fight and one camp. Well, let me just tell you this. When Peter got involved with me training for eight fights, he had to develop a style to protect his chin. Right. Because Tyson were vulnerable. Tyson has never been dropped with Peter in his corner because Peter wasn't in corner when he fought Cunningham. He wasn't allowed in country. He got arrested at, at the border going from Canada into North America. Peter developed his style to protect Tyson's chin, right? And it worked well. They ended up winning, you know, they won everything the British Commonwealth would be in all that, Beaches Order for all that, and then beat, beat Vladimir Ring Magazine. So they climbed top at Mountain. What happened, what's happened after that? That's between them. But Tyson's style after when he left Peter and he's obviously been with other people, he didn't like Ben Davison, didn't stay with him, did he? So there was something there that you know what he went for me. Same with Billy Joe, it won't they want Ben won't for him because he's not learned his craft. They're not going to respect him in Jim Adder. He would whip him, boy, wasn't he? Peter yeah. wouldn't put me out at any of that behavior. You know, you, you know what I mean? Because he's not going to be whipping boy, is he? But when he's gone with this other guy, this Sugar Hill, there's this rumour that, yeah, he's sitting down in his shots and all that. But I ain't fucking buying into that, mate. Let me tell you this. I know I know Tyson's style. Right? And I, in my opinion, and I'm not the only person saying this, but I'm not going to say who said it to me. I personally think for the last couple of years, he, he's tried to change his style a little bit because he's not always going to have that he can do 12 rounds standing on his head because he looked to me after 10th round in that fight against Wilder and I, he was hanging on for dear life wasn't he they both were weren't they well yeah they both both Wilder Wilder just made it look like it was one sided because he was so knackered yeah well you're going to see Tyson matched up now against people where who knows? Let's see if he's got the spring in his legs. But if he fights Dylan White next, which is what they're all talking about, personally, I think they're going to mess all the fans about them because they're both messes. Yeah. Both messes, both big egos. If they do fight, it's going to be interesting to see what style Tyson adapts. But that fight's a closer fight than it were last year to call now. Now that I've seen Tyson's performance against Wilder and, and Dylan, I think they're both maybe on slide, but. Dylan's got a better chance this next time out than he would have done a year ago. But I think Tyson's still a massive favourite, but I don't think he's at the peak. I think he's on way down. You might not agree with me, Rob. If you've got your gypsy. No, I think, I, 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 think, uh, I, think he, I think he'll beat Dylan White. Yeah. And um, I think Usyk will beat Joshua in the rematch. And I think Usyk will beat Fury in the undisputed fight. And that'll that might be the end of Fury for a bit. No, he'll, he'll come back. He'll just he'll disappear. But it, like I've just said to you there, he's never been one of them to do regular fights, Tyson. Never, no. never, never. So I, I just think I just think Usyk will have a beating of him. Yeah, I do. I think um, I think if Wilder had been a bit lighter and a bit faster, he'd have, he'd have beaten Fury. Well, in my opinion, Usyk's. Up there with Tyson Fury, it's a flip a coin job for them too. But I think Usyk will, will have more staying power than Tyson because of his lifestyle. That's it. You can't keep blowing up with back fats on your back uh, and eating what you want, drinking what you want, and saying, I'll beat anybody and blah, blah, blah. And I've developed my style now to knock him out instead of dancing. He can't dance no more because he's not fit. Can't get through it at that age. You can't. Roy Jones couldn't do it when he got by a certain age. Couldn't do it. Once yeah. the reflexes are gone. Well, he's 33. 34 in it's August, good. yeah. Yeah, so it, it, it'll be, it'll probably be nearly 35 by the time Look he has how he's the lived idea. his life. Look how he's lived his life as well. 
Yeah. So he, that's what I mean. I reckon he's got another two, possibly two fights left in him, and he'll be lucky if he retires undefeated. Well, we're going to see, aren't we? But we wish him well because he's done well to come back from all that adversity, if it were all oh, true. Yeah. But that's, that's, that's for people to have a think about because, like I said, I don't believe not that they say him or his father, but that's just me, isn't it? I'm very sceptical. So you're not. You've got a Gypsy King T-shirt on, so you believe about everything you're told, don't you? <laughs> well, well, I don't. I, I don't believe everything I'm told. I, I, I like. I enjoy watching the Fury interviews, but they're a big contradiction. Um, <laughs> yeah. 140 kilo bench press eight reps. The the thing is, we're 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 fans, aren't we? We 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 follow the sport, so we do it to be entertained and. Um, John Fury is entertainment, isn't he? He's comedy gold. Cause I, I fear for John's know. life, you know, because you know now that MI5 are watching him. He's a serious dude, isn't he? Like, MI5 are watching John Fury living in a field in a caravan. He's like, the more interested in him than uh, Kenny Noy. <laughs> I don't know. Ooh. <laughs> But, whose, fi- whose field is he in? Who's that? Because I've seen them in the back of his I house, think. isn't it? Anybody, it's, it's field at back of his house, isn't it? Anybody think you were in Bear Grill is in the middle of a jungle? Fucking hell. But but you know, at the end of the day, boxing would be a boring sport if if um if they were all like Dubois and didn't say much, you know. We have gotta have a bit of something, otherwise we'd have nothing, would we? That's why I don't play snooker no more, because main snooker player around here is that Sean Murphy, isn't he? You know, in Barry Earn's little mole. Barry he reports Earn. back to everybody, doesn't he, at matching about who's partying in hotels. Sean Murphy, you're a prick from Rotherham. Come see me, you little jobs worth. But uh, no, it'd be boring, wouldn't it, boxing, if everybody were like him or like Nicky Piper. You'd be in bits, wouldn't you? You know what I mean? I mean, you don't hear anybody turn around and say, you know what, I can't wait for boxing tonight. Hey, we're coming, we've got a minibus book. We're going to Nicky Piper fight. I never heard anybody say that when I were when I were uh, winter boxing fights back in the day, but uh, but it is. Well, look, you, you'll tune in, won't you? If Fury's on, you'll you'll tune in to see what's being said, even if it's Big John in his field. You'll tune in just to see what he's talking about. But you've got to take what he says with a pinch of salt. I don't can't believe it. Once some once somebody's told me a lie, like I pick up a newspaper in the morning, I read it, and it said. Yeah, I had an hundred thousand pound bare knuckle fight, Irish champion, 1992, and knocked him out hundred grand cash. Didn't happen, never <laughs> happened. If it did happen, John, where did it happen? Who were referee and where's the footage? Hey, big hundred grand fight in 1992 when everybody had a camcorder. Rubbish, utter rubbish. Bit like that other one, wasn't it? Our number three in UK, five in Europe, number 30 in the world. Who's, who's told him that? Where are they getting this knackers from? It's knackers. Shit it's chatters. Easy. Shit chatters, mate. No time for them. So once you tell me a lie, oh, else is no good. And you know the old saying, don't you, in a court of law, when you're in the Crown Court and people are get, coming in to get evidence about you and your barristers are ripping them. Barry, I've had this before one of my trials, my barrister. Have you ever been in trouble before? Oh, yeah, but for what What for? My barrister knew he had it all wrote down when they were asking it questions. He goes, oh, no, not for anything worth bragging about. He says, well, what it dishonesty? Well, yeah, he says, uh, can we have this man took out at dock? And they took him out. Because all he's going to say in that court, no good. Because he's a liar. Yeah. And John Fury's a liar. But nobody's going to tell him, are they only me? Who? <laughs> Who would who would dare bring it up in and which which why, why, why would you want to be fighting the John Fury? Have you ever seen him fight on my channel? Go watch my most viewed video. Oh, yeah, I've video. seen it. Right. My most mo- my most viewed video, John Fury's on there getting put to kit twice. Do you know what I mean? So why would you want to be scared of that? Because if that were Audley Harrison, you'd all be saying, I'll tell Audley Harrison. So who's John Fury? He never won a belt. Never won a belt. He never had a bare knuckle fight in his life. Never had a bare knuckle fight in his life. He might have bashed people up, but he never had a straight in his life. It's lies. So why do people 
buy into this load of shit. It's a load of shit. You, you've obviously bought into it, haven't you? No, I, I, I think he's hilarious. I don't believe, I don't believe half of, half of what he says. Do you know what they're think, laughing at? Listen, let me tell you this, right? You know that lot of BT? Production staff, right? Let me tell, this is a true story. Production staff, Davey Day, and there's a few other people whose names I'm not going to mention, piss the pants at him. You know why? Because he does views, doesn't he? But the piss the pants. They piss the pants at him. That's all it is. They've kept him sweet, haven't they? They've kept it. We'll keep him happy. Because whatever he's at BT, he's an happy bunny and he's going to tell us what's going on with Tyson and Tommy. That's all it is. When Tyson and Fury are not boxing, you think they're going to have him at BT? Be gone, mate. In the road, Jack. But like yeah. I said, I ain't got no time for him. For liars, bullshit. There's no time for it, mate. No time. Boxing's full of them. Full of them, mate. Trust me. But we've had a good chat. We've, we've righted a few wrongs. I'm going to have a bed bath now. I'm trying to have an early one. Uh, I used to have something in here that I used to go ding, 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 ding. Nobody comes in now. They just leave me to my own devices. They just leave me sat here like this. How good is like, it? Like, uh, you know, when John Fury described himself as the man in the, what was it, the leper in the loft or something? Is that where you, you know that now? film Braveheart, that 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 man in that leper in loft, that man in the loft, the leper. I am him. Why would you say that? Hey, what? Why? Why? Why do? Why say talking no, shit for the sake of talking shit? Talking shit for the sake of talking shit. And you've got these YouTubers who are going up to film him. They're pissing the pants, but they're not going to say views. Views. That's all it is. Views, it's, it's, it's hard now, mate. It's way, way, way it's gone, isn't it? It makes my job a lot easier because I don't need to write now. Now, those fucking you mention there, and I think, oh, fucking shit, you were coming out of it the other day. But like I said, once you tell a lie, you've got to tell another. But oh, else you said to me after that, it's no good. That's no good. Yeah. That's why I used to have a big circle of people around me, and now I don't. I just have a small circle of people because too many shit chatters. People who chat shit and pay your lip service so won't get through my fucking front door half of them now. But I have had people here, shit chatters. And I thought, what am I doing? Sat up here with this person here chatting shit all night, talking utter bollocks. I'd rather do something constructive. I'd rather read a book or something. So, but listen, thanks for coming on, Rob. You've been, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. You've had uh, a good hour, a good hour, over a good hour and a half. We've uh, covered a lot of topics. Uh, I just want to ask you who wins uh, Saturday night, Galahad or Martinez? I don't care, but it'll be Galahad. Galahad in a stinker. So, what? Another pointless fight. Another pointless fight. Yeah, another pointless fight. But I would have liked to have seen Galahad against Josh Warrington again. I would have, I would have liked to have seen that. Uh, and they could put that to bed. I think Galahad's developed a really unbeatable style. He's like a surgeon. But he's got to be more exciting for me. But he, he, he's developed his craft and he has to be given credit because he, he, he never had any attention to put that gym for years. He's always been kinetic background. He's always not had the material yeah. things that other people have had. So he deserves every bit of success that he's got. But his style... Bores the fucking pants off me. I won't get out of the bed to watch him, and I don't like him as a person, and I don't know him. But from what I've seen of him, I don't like him. So, yeah. but he has to be given credit for what he's done in the sport because he he's going to be very, very hard to beat. He could be best out of all of them. It's just will he even get that opportunity? Because, like you say, his style, his style. No one's going to want to fight him, are they? Because it's boring. He's not there to be it, but then again, Andre Ward won't. But Andre Ward had the devil in him a little bit more than Gallard, didn't he? Mm. Do you know what I mean? So And a bit, yeah, son of God. He had a bit more of a profile, you know? People, and it's a different weight class as well. People don't tune in to watch. It's got to be a barnstormer, hasn't it? Otherwise, people aren't interested in watching it. Mm. But Warrington versus Galahad, too. Would we find out what Warrington has left? Because yeah. I don't think it's a lot. Okay, then. I'm just going to leave boxing fans with this before I go. 
should there be a light heavyweight tournament domestic wise in the UK? Because not all these top eight light heavyweights in the UK, none of them have got a world title. So why don't we get the promoters in the UK to put a tournament together for light heavyweights and let's get them all at it. Or the welterweights as well, because there's no world title belts at welterweights for any of our lads, is there? Let's say, get them all in and Muhammad Ali Chope is good enough, isn't it? At least you're not yeah. paying sanction fees for it, are you, Rob? <laughs> no, that, that's right. And you know what? The the box, uh, the um, the George Groves, DeGale, Chris Eubank, that tournament, that was a good tournament. Yeah. Or Callum Smith. That, good fighters all had to fight each other. I don't think DeGale were in that, though, were they? No, not DeGale. I'm talking uh, Callum Smith, uh, George Groves, Yildrim. You back, yeah. There was a few knockovers, but the, the good fighters in there. That's what we want to see, isn't it? Otherwise, there's no point in even following box City. It's hard to follow the sport as it is. Callum Smith didn't knock out Nicky Holtz in a kickboxer, though, did he? In semis? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. He was outstanding, wasn't he? Reserve. But he did Groves in final, so good luck to Callum. All right then, Rob. Have a great weekend down there in Australia, eating kangaroo meat. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for awesome. having us on, Russ. I appreciate it. Yeah. I, I can't believe I am actually on the channel, to be honest. Um, oh, just go to show that you uh, you do actually let the people on if you you know. Yeah, if you, if people want to if people want to ask me questions or not people who want to ask personal questions because I get lost a lot of personal questions. You can imagine, can't you? Over and under the day, some of, some of it's that it's quite funny actually. It's therapeutic reading it. But uh, <laughs> if they want to ask ask questions or think you're smart or tricky. I'm not saying that you thought you were smart or tricky, but you asked a couple of times the same question, didn't you? You've had your chance and we've, and we've put it to bed and, and I feel that we've, 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 I've made a pal in you now, boxing pal. So if anybody else wants to ask questions or you want to think you're tricky eddies or you think you're clever cunts, come on Zoom. All right, porkycorner at mail.com. Let's see your story. All right. All right. Cheers, Rob. Peace out.